Okay, I think we are live. Let me check the sound. I hope everyone's having a great uh, Friday. It's a pretty darn good Friday for me. Let me change this view here. Let's see what's that. I think that's okay. Yeah, so let me check the sound here. Checking, okay. checking. Yep, we it sounds good. Live. Let me. Yeah. So, sounds good. Let me good. check the sound here. Coolo. So yeah, I've got my my dating shirt on. We're talking about dating today. So I hope everyone's having a great Friday. Today <laughs> is Friday. It's a little bit rainy here in Medellin, Colombia, but overall, how's my hair? I just got my hair did. Um, go to the barber shop down the street. It, it was raining on the way home, so it got a little flat because he did blow dry it, but whatever. I don't even own a blow dryer. I should probably get one. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a great day. I'm going to be talking about dating, uh, particularly, obviously in Colombia because this is where I reside, but, um, yeah, it's uh it's a t it's a big topic. A lot of people come to Colombia for this uh you know, looking for looking for love. About my shirt shit. Yeah. Looking for love. Um, yeah, so tonight we're going to have a podcast as well, the Columbia podcast, and I will be streaming that live on my channels, um, which will be fun. It's always fun. I'm just uh, organizing my notes here. I'm going to get started here in a minute. Welcome to everybody that's joining live. This is Andrew, uh, Life Hacks with Andrew. It's the name of the channel, unofficially, because it's not official because I don't own the, the channel name yet. Um, it's just a new project that I've started this year. I've been streaming for a year now, uh, a year, a month. <laughs> but every single day I do a live stream about different topics, typically business, lifestyle, um, motivation. I love mo becoming a motivator. Um, yeah. So it's been fun. Okay, so let's see who's online, who's on the lines. I hope you, hey, thank you for the uh, like, Johnny Rios, always supporting, man. You're always, you're always great, man. Hello, Debbie, how are you? Long time no see. I've seen uh, pictures of, of your granddaughter. She's amazing. Oh, and then the new baby, too. Dang. 
of your granddaughter. She's amazing. Oh, and then the new baby, too. Dang. Let me open up the stream just to make sure. I got the uh, any questions that you guys may have or comments, feel free to make them. But we'll get started here. With the dating episode, obviously there will be more dating episodes on my channel. Um, I haven't done one yet. It's been a month of streaming, but it's a big topic. Um, a lot of you may know that I have a blog post out there on my personal blog called themedianbuzz.com. And that blog post in its heyday, it's uh, outdated because I haven't updated it. Uh, I'm going to start updating that blog. Well, I already started updating the blog, but that blog post in particular, I haven't updated. And I think I'm just going to create a new one to give you my new perspective on dating and what's going on in my life. Because basically, that it, that's what it, that blog post was, was basically a, an account of my dating escapades. It's not much of an escapades, I guess, but it looks cool. But it's not really anything out of the ordinary. It's just the guy being single and dating women here. Um, I didn't know it was going to get so much traction. It, it used to get about 20,000 visits per month just to that one page. <laughs> I've gotten, I calculated uh, roughly 700, over 700,000 people have seen it in the last six years and read it. Um, so it's a big post. So when I started this, this thing that I'm doing now, which is live streaming about different topics and stuff, that's one of the things that people hit me up about the most is, you know, when are you going to do a dating episode? When are you going to talk about tips for dating? I'm like, Motherfucker, I'm trying to learn how to date out here still. And I'm like, it's uh, I've been here 10 years. Um, so I'm just going to recount my experience and give tips based on my experience. Everybody's experience is different, um, you know, in life, let alone in Colombia. Colombia is way different than, you know, dating in Colombia is different in many aspects, but it's also very similar in very aspects to, I guess, most places in the world, really. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not like something, you know, crazy different than what you see in the United States. Daniel Gomez, uh, Fernando, thank you for the like. Hope you guys are, are doing well. Oh, let me actually share this link here on my original post. Yeah, so thank you guys, uh, Andre, Sherry, Stevie, thank you guys for the love, for the like. Fernando Bocanegra in Hawaii, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day today over there in Hawaii. I think you guys are like at least three or four hours behind us. So it's only like 11 a.m. over there, which is crazy. That's the way the world is, I guess. Um, yeah, so let's talk about dating. I'm going to start recording this. Let me see. Can I change something here? Cannot. Okay, whatever. So let's talk about dating. I'm going to I'm going to start recording. Welcome to Life Hacks with Andrew. I'm Andrew Messia. Today we're talking about my four dating tips in Colombia. I'm 41 years old. I'm not married. I've never been married. I don't have any kids and I'm happy as a pig in shit. What is dating like in Colombia? I've lived here for 10 years now, going on 11. And I've obviously, and I've been single this whole time. I don't think I've had a relationship that's lasted more than I, at most a year, maybe six months to a year in the last 11 years. And that's the way I like it. It's not because there's something wrong with me. I have gone to therapy about it and we figured out that, no, it's what makes me happy. I don't have a fear of commitment, and I do hope to one day find someone that I can settle down with. But in the meantime, I'm having 
a ton of fun. If you're a friend of mine and you know, you know how it is. And it is very fun to live here, particularly in Medellin, Colombia, and dating. Because it's a little different than what dating life is like in the United States. I've been dating Colombian women for almost a decade now. Well, I've been dating Colombian women for over a decade now. Over the years, I've met some amazing women here in Medellin. The women here are beautiful, and word is spreading pretty much around the world. So I've decided to create a, not only a blog post, but also a video. And I'll continue to post videos and create streams around the topic. It's not going to be the main focus, but I do understand that a lot of people want to know what it's like here. The places frequented by tourists here in Medellin are more saturated with foreigners than ever before. After the pandemic, and or not, we're still in a pandemic, but after the pandemic lockdowns, it seems like people have just flocked to Medellin, Colombia. You know, the hot girls, quote unquote, are not the sole reason for this rise in tourism to the city of Eternal Spring but it's definitely up there. A quick disclaimer, I'm aware of the underground world of sex tourism, sex monger networks, and prostitution in Colombia. It is legal here. And I know that there are many strip clubs and brothels in Medellin. However, strippers and prepagos, which are escorts in Spanish, are not the types of girls that I date nor is it something that I pursue, nor is it something that I would like to promote, uh, nor is it something that I would like to promote. Therefore, I will not be referring to that in this broadcast or in this video. Also, this is a narrative of my experience. It's not meant to be a guide or advice for you. If you take my tips that I've created for myself and think that they can apply to you, I love that and I think that's great, but this may not work or this may not be the solution for everyone. Also, uh, I do not intend to degrade or belittle women. On the contrary, I respect them and believe that no matter where you go, you'll find extraordinary women. Medellin just happens to have many of them. Uh, so let's get started with my situation first, before I get to the tips. My situation is a little bit different than most of the foreigners that come to Colombia. First of all, I'm actually Colombian. <laughs> my family is Colombian. And more importantly, aside from my 6'2 or 6'3 height, I look Colombian. I have lived my entire life, barring the last 10 years, in Southern California. At first glance, Medellin women do not perceive me as a foreigner due to the way I look. I look Colombian, so I fit in. And that's one of the reasons I love living here is because I do fit in. I feel like Chewbacca when he returned home <laughs> and found his planet. It's like, oh, I fit in here and I look just like everyone else. So that has its pros and cons, too, because I don't stand out. The only thing that makes me stand out, let's say, to women is my height. Um, so my situation is a little bit different, probably, than yours, or yeah, everybody has a different situation. Um, so the gringo effect is, is the, doesn't work for me. That I don't get the I don't get the instant gringo effect here in Colombia. The gringo effect is uh, a reaction that a guy gets from some girls here in Colombia and Medellin, or in Colombia, even in South America, I guess, or any other foreign country south of the United States. The gringo effect is that instant reaction that you get from a woman. Uh, or from some women, because some uh, there are, I, and I have met a lot of women here that just aren't into gringos. That's not their thing. They like local Colombian guys. Um, 
so I don't get that gringo effect uh, right away. Uh, and I did write what the gringo effect, I believe, is for me. The gringo effect is the reaction a foreign guy gets from some girls here in Medellin. It is an immediate sense, it, it is an immediate sense of curiosity that some Colombian women have upon meeting or seeing a foreigner. Most of my close friends here in Medellin are foreigners, and I have seen girls break their necks checking them out and staring at them literally from across the street, across the mall, wherever it is, uh, it happens and it's real. So I don't get that immediate attention here in Medellin. Actually, I got more instant att attention in so uh, Southern California at times with the Latino effect. When I'd go to salsa bars or whatever, and there'd be white women, I'd get the Latino effect. The only thing that makes me stand out here again is my height. Thank God for the Spanish conquistadors that raped and pillaged here. Otherwise, I'd probably be, you know, 5'9", and um, shorter. And uh, I mean, I can't, I can't, I need to work, I need more things in my favor than I have against me, right? I can't be, you know, not attractive and short. Come on, give me something. Um, so uh, another difference between me and many of the foreigners that come here are that I speak Spanish fluently. Therefore, I can't play the no hablo español or mucho bueno card. Uh, Quieres practicar conmigo. I, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't do that. I can't go up to a girl and say, hey, I don't speak Spanish or I'm learning Spanish. And would you like to practice? Which is a very common pickup line here. And it works because a lot of the times the woman wants to practice her English. So for me, I, when I meet a girl in Spanish, I talk to her fluently in Spanish, so I've got to rely on other qualities. Um, so I can't play that card, the, the gringo card. Regardless, I look on the bright side, and this is an advantage. I'm naturally outgoing and funny. I shouldn't say naturally. I am outgoing and funny, and I'm going to get to that in my tips. I am outgoing and funny, so I can rely, uh, so I can really be myself when I speak in Spanish. Uh, so I do see myself speaking Spanish fluently as an advantage because one of the things about learning a new language is that your pe personality can't carry over very well into this new language because you don't have all of the vocabulary or the knowledge or understanding of the culture in order to make, especially if you're a funny person, you know, making observational humor or uh, colloquialisms, sayings, and incorporating them into your personality or in the jokes that you crack. That was a big thing for me when I first got here because I didn't know the culture. I didn't know the slang. The Paisa slang is very different. The accent is very different. So I had to learn all this. And as I started learning it, I knew what would start a laugh or get a laugh out of a person automatically. In the United States, there are you know topical comments or even trending uh, videos or memes or something that if you mention it, people will laugh because it triggers that meme and, and they laugh. In Spanish too, in Colombia, in Medellin, there are influencers, there are people that make memes and everything. So if you know that and you're talking to someone and you mention it, you get an instant laugh and it's easy because they did all the work. You're just mentioning the meme or whatever it is. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, I see it as an advantage that I actually speak Spanish fluently here in Colombia, instead of a disadvantage, where when I first got here, I was a little bit sour. I was a little bit salty at my gringo friends because they would get instant attention from women, especially if they were blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, white skin. I've seen, uh, I shit you not, I've seen women fight over guys that are my friends here uh, to be able to just talk to them or dance with them at a club. I've seen that happen. And, um, that's never happened to me. I think, um, you know, I went to oil wrestling one time, and I guess they were kind of fighting for my attention, but they were fighting for all the guys' attention. In that was in Las Vegas, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. The, so the the whole Spanish thing is, I see it as an advantage, and now that I've learned the culture, the slang, what makes people laugh here, etc., the observational humor. So I use that to my advantage now. Um, and 
I call it spillage. Like when my gringo friends get here and they attract all this attention, they attract the attention, but once they can't really communicate with them, I'll be like, well, let's talk over here. So then I start talking to the girls and, and I become friends with the women. It's, 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 um, it's easier because I speak Spanish and I'm the one that has to speak to them a lot of the times or explain to them what they're trying to say, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm outgoing, I'm funny, so I can really be myself when I speak Spanish. It is, it, it's hard for one's true personality to translate when speaking another language, but luckily I'm fluent enough in Spanish and I've lived here enough to be able to be my witty self. I have found that Medellin women, like most women all around the world, love compliments, good conversation, and like it when a guy can make them laugh. So Spanish has been essential for me here in Medellin and in my dating life or meeting people life, right? Uh, so let's get into it. Let's get into my top four tips for dating. And these tips actually can carry over to anywhere in the world that you date because I found this to be true in all the other countries that I've been to. And I've used this to meet people to make connections, and obviously to have sex, which is the whole idea of living, right? It's not the only idea of living, but we're here to procreate, right? We're fucking animals. Uh, so we've got to get our foot in the door. So number four tip for dating in Colombia is meet people everywhere. In Colombia, meeting people is easier than in the United States. Why? Because Colombian people are usually more friendly, they're warm, they're open, and they're willing to greet someone or meet someone that they don't know. Literally, it's part of the culture when you get into like an elevator and you see a neighbor that you've never seen before or a person in the mall and you're in an elevator, you say, buenos dias, buenas tardes, hello, how are you? Uh, you don't say, how are you? You usually just say, hello, or good afternoon, good evening. And then when you leave, you say, hasta luego, buen dia, good, have a good day type of thing. That's normal here. So being able to meet someone right away is easier, right? You, you can actually say hello to someone and they'll respond and look you in the eye and not look at you like you're a serial killer, which may happen in the United States and, or in Europe or in any other country that's a little bit colder than Colombia. I know in Southern California, women have their guard up all the time. And not only women, but men too. It's not like you can go up to another stranger and, you know, and, and say, hey, man, I, I noticed that you were working on something. You're at a cafe or something. And then spark up a conversation. That's kind of unusual. Maybe it's, maybe it's possible now because of the, uh, what do we call them? The, the, the ceramic or the crystal generation, the, the, the people, the, 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 the new generation now, which is very fragile and, uh, and that makes them a little bit more friendly as well. But our generation, I'm 41. Yeah. It's like going up to someone new. It, it's like, you have to have a whole fucking plan in your head of how you're going to infiltrate their group and then talk to the hot girl. First, I'm going to talk to the fatty and then I'm going to talk to the ugly one and then I'm going to make everyone laugh. And then I'm going to somehow get infiltrate the group and get to the hot one. You don't need that. That that doesn't exist here in Colombia. Maybe in the United States it does or did. I don't know. I haven't been back in 11 years. But here in Colombia, you don't need that. You could go right for the one that you like. It's actually they love that. And the other women will be like, ah. you know, like what? You know, it, it's it's different here. So meet people everywhere. So where are some places to meet people in Colombia? And this works everywhere I've gone. For me, my place. Uh, uh, for me. My favorite places to meet people are through activities. Sports, volunteering, events in the city, beer tasting festivals, concerts, shows, nerd shit like Comic-Con, board games, video games. So how do you find out about these? Well, Facebook has a ton of groups, especially in Medellin. Medellin has a very good, uh, that's one thing I really like about using Facebook in Medellin is that there are groups for everything. If you like board games, there's a Medellin board game uh, group. If, you've, if you like spike ball, there's a Medellin spike ball group. So I'm part of all those groups that are things that I like to do and even new things. I never, 
I, I, I started to play spike ball because I played it on the beach in Mexico. And then when I came back here, I started looking up spike ball groups. And now I'm getting into pickleball. Pick, pickleball is like more of a older person sport, but there are some young people that play there. And even if it's older people, it doesn't matter. You're going to meet a bunch of other people and then you're probably going to go out or, or it's just a great way. The more that you meet people, the more of a chance you're going to get to meet beautiful, attractive, smart, funny women, right? It's just by law. Um, so for me, meeting people through activities, not only, not only is it a great way for numbers, right, where you get a ton of people to, uh, where you can meet a, a bunch of people by joining groups and then meeting up with them and going, uh, I play sports, so I play basketball, I play volleyball. Volleyball is a great sport because it's co-ed. So is spike ball. Uh, so co-ed sports and, and joining those groups, uh, flag football, or not flag football, but uh, the Frisbee football thing, uh, I forget, ultimate Frisbee. There's a lot of that here in Medellin. If you're not that active, there are groups for art, painting, um, reading clubs. There, uh, people here read a lot, actually, but you have to read in Spanish, um, uh, et cetera. Um, one of the best, though, is volunteer groups. Because not only will you find beautiful women, because it's not hard to find a beautiful woman. What is hard is to find a beautiful woman that you're not only attracted to physically, but also uh, psychologically, you know, intellectually, that you guys match and she's attracted to you. And so that's why the groups work so well for me. I love volunteering. I like working with children and adults. I like to help people. So when I, so I join volunteer groups and the past two years, Pretty much, I would say, you know, 50, at least 50% of the people that I've dated or that I meet and I go out with and sleep with are, you know, volunteers from different groups um, or associated with volunteering or, or something. It just, it's not because that was my intention because I do like to volunteer. And then I, as I was writing these tips, I was like, where can you meet people? Where do I meet people? I'm like, fuck. I naturally meet people through volunteer groups because I volunteer and I genuinely want to go help. But then you meet the group of people and then everyone's like, oh, what are you guys doing afterwards? Let's go have a beer. Or let's go grab lunch. And then you start to get to know people and then you get to know them naked. So volunteer groups are great. Um, I like going to events in the city. There are a lot of music events and um, uh, I'm not a big techno person, so I don't really go to those. But if you do, there are people here like techno, house, trance, all that stuff. I'm, I'm not big in that. I mean, I could maybe stand it for an hour, but after that, you know, some people do like four hours or into like six o'clock in the morning marathons. Uh, we have a question here, ETWTFPTM. <laughs> That's a crazy name, username. I'll get to your question right here because it is part of one of the tips. You're asking, how important is it to be extroverted in terms of dating in Colombia? That's a great question, and I'll get to that here in a second. So talking about places to meet people, uh, there are a lot of events. There are, there's a lot of uh, the craft beer scene is getting bit bigger here, and there are craft breweries. Uh, literally, um, in Spanish, you would have to look up, let's say, in Google or in Facebook is Cerveza Artesanal, artesanal which is artis artisanal beer. They don't have a word for craft, or that is the word for craft, artesanal, um, which is artisanal. It, it's a very related. Um, so uh, they have events, or if that's what you like. I like craft beer, so I like going to those events, and then I meet people that like craft beer as well, etc. I like to go to concerts a lot. Like, for example, last weekend, I went to um, a Beatles cover band concert at the theater, which was great, and um, and I saw a couple people that were there, and they introduced me to the, some other people, and one of which was beautiful as well. So, and I actually took a date there because her, her and I, I guess I don't know if it was a date. We're kind of friends. We're in the friend zone of each other's, uh, I guess. But she likes the Beatles. I like the Beatles, and it was great. Um, had a lot of fun. But those are the type of events that I like to go to because I meet like-minded people. Another place to meet people here in Colombia are, for example, nerd shit. <laughs> what I call nerd shit on my list. I, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to video. Well, I am a nerd when it comes to video games, comic books, um, 
board games. So there are groups for that. There are groups for that. And even though, you know, like video games is predominantly men, there are a lot of women that do video games. There are a lot of women that like board games. So that's a great group for me because it's kind of like you have a captive audience. When you're playing a video game together, you have a ca captive audience. If you're playing a board game, you have a captive audience. So it's a great way to meet people and to actually to get to know their personality. So yeah, that's number four. Tip number four is meet people everywhere. Um, so, that, so groups on Facebook and groups on uh, and events, etc. That's a great place. Another great place to meet people is outside. You need to step outside to talk to people. People in Colombia are, like I said before, people in Colombia are very approachable. Approachable. I'm going to repeat that. People in Colombia, people in Colombia are very approachable. It's not like in the United States where many people have their guard up when meeting someone new or have a mindset that the world revolves around them. So when you come into their world, you're an intruder. So, you know, going outside and meeting people is easy. For example, uh, cafes, bars, discos, bookstores, malls, uh, Ciclovia on the weekends. On, on Sunday, they close down the main roads here in Medellin and in most major cities in Colombia, it's what you call Ciclovia or the cycle way because they close them all down and people either walk their dog, walk themselves, jog, or ride their bike, skateboard along this huge stretch of the street. And um, even if you go by yourself, you'll see beautiful people walking their dog. And that's one of my favorite things is I love dogs. So when I see a, a beautiful dog, it's not like in the United States where people are really protective and they like their own space. You can actually go up and say, oh my God, that's a, such a beautiful dog. Can I pet it? And I don't, I don't go down and pet the dog immediately because first of all, I want to establish dominance to the dog. I took a training course when I had a dog before from Caesar Milan and that's one of the things. So. I love dogs, so that's one of the things that I do is like, can I pet your dog? Can I say hi to him? I usually, in Spanish, I say, can I, can I say hi? Lo puedo saludar? And, and uh, no one's ever said no. And, um, and then I start a conversation after, you know, petting the dog and not talking to it like a baby, which is, I don't know, I, it's a turnoff for me, so I, I wouldn't want a girl that likes that. Anyway, so the Ciclovia is a great place. Cafes are a great place to meet people, again, you can spark up a conversation a lot easier here in the, in Colombia than in the United States because people are here because people here are friendly, they're warm, they're approachable. Um, bars and discos. There is not much of a dating li uh, a dating scene in bars here or even discos. People when people go to a disco, it's because they want to go dance, and the music's super loud. If you're an attractive person or you find someone that you're attracted to physically right away and there's chemistry, that makes it a lot easier. But if you're a guy like me that relies a lot on their personality, then, you know, discos are fun to go to and dance with people and stuff. But there's not there's there's not a big one night stand scene here in, in discos in Colombia as a whole, maybe on the coast a little bit because they're a little bit crazier and fun over there. But here in Medellin, at least, one night stands for me are very limited. For my attractive gringo friends, they've been more frequent, but they've had a harder time, meaning that girls don't really want a one night stand a lot here. Like in the United States, that's one of the great things about the Me Too movement that I love is that women are fucking like, you know, rabbits and they don't want you to call them back. And I love that. <laughs> uh, but here in Colombia, Women want you to call them back. If you get a phone number, they expect you to text right away. They don't, there's no like, oh, I'm, I wonder if I should wait two days. I don't want to seem over zealous or over uh, eager. No, you fucking text right away. It's like, hey, it was nice to meet you. What are you doing tomorrow? Or what are you doing this weekend? Let me take you out. That's totally normal here a and almost expected in the dating culture here. So yeah, meeting people at cafes, bars, discos, everywhere, going outside, literally walking your dog or walking down the road and you see a beautiful woman, it's okay to say hello 
And yes, some people are standoffish just because that's human nature. But if you say hello and you have a good opening line like, hey, where's the metro? And oh, by the way, or being very direct. I have a couple friends here that are super direct. They see a beautiful woman, whether it's walking down the street. It's happened before where we were walking back from basketball, playing at the university, and we were walking on the street. And a beautiful girl walked with two guys. She was walking with two, girl, two guys. A beautiful woman, uh, they, it looked like they were coming back from work or they, they had like smocks on or whatever, or going to work. And my friend, he's like, I got to turn around and talk to that girl. I'm like, what? Really? She's like with two guys. And it almost looked like one of them were together with her. And he was like, I don't care. He went back, talked to her, and said, hello. I saw you. you know, we just passed by. I think you're very attractive. Can I take you out someday? And she gave her her WhatsApp number. And um, they dated. Well, they went on a date. It didn't turn out to go anywhere, but that is very possible. But again, that comes with, you know, your personality as well. You know, you can't just, you can't be scared. I mean, I think a lot of people, especially in the United States, we have a culture where it's, where, where men are emasculated and scared to approach women. And that's why there are courses for $2,000 seminars on how to, talk to women and you have to peacock and be an interesting person, how to be an interesting person. Like that shit here in Colombia doesn't exist because men are men and women are women. And you grow up with that. And the relationships, uh, working with kids now uh, in volunteering and stuff, I see how that is already incorporated in the culture. Men are not emasculated. Boys play with girls, girls play with boys, they they sing and laugh together. It's um, it's not like in the U.S. where from the get-go you're kind of separated and, and, and once you hit adolescence, it's like, oh, shit, now, you know, you're miserable and then you're going to go shoot up 20 people at your high school because you can't get laid. So it, that doesn't exist here. There are no mass shootings. The mass shootings that happen, it's like the fucking guerrillas or the paramilitaries killing each other out there with the military. Um Another way to, that I meet people that I love is hosting events. Literally, I'm hosting one tonight where there will probably be 25 people. We're filming the Columbia podcast live in front of a live audience as well, so I'll be broadcasting that later at 7 p.m. Columbia time. But that's been a gold mine because we invite a bunch of friends, and they invite a bunch of friends, and we're the center of attention, and they're coming into our house, into, well, one of my apartments, which was the one that Joel lives in, at our apartments. It's his apartment, too. So he lives in that one right now because it's not being, it's going to be remodeled, but he's living in it right now. And so when you host an event, apart, apart from the Columbia podcast, which takes a lot of time and effort and money to put together a podcast, but I, I throw parties at my house where we'll just literally, I'll put on a party bulb put music on, everyone brings drinks, and we party and dance and drink. Um, we, I cook. I'll invite people over to cook. And I'm like, I'm vegan, so I'll do some vegan stuff. Let's all do vegan cooking night or whatever. And people come, and, and women like that. Uh, not only women. I don't just invite women. I invite my guy friends as well, and everybody cooks, and everyone learns something new from someone, and we eat, and we'll listen to music or do something afterwards, right? So hosting parties at your house is great. It's great on many levels. The predominantly is because the, one of the hardest things to do is to get a woman to come to your house. So you're already over the first hurdle is getting to her to come to your house. But that's the other thing. Your house should be nice. It doesn't mean that you have to live in a mansion or a nice big apartment or whatever, but you should have plants. You should have art. You should have decorations. It should be organized. It should be clean. It's not expensive to you know buy a nice throw to put on your couch with a couple nice pillows, make your bed, and learn. Uh, literally, uh, this is what I've done. I've gone on, on YouTube or on Google, and I type in how to make my bed more attractive. And I've learned that you know instead of just putting the blankets up on top, there are ways like you'd, you'd see like in a hotel right? To make your bed. So that's what I've done by adding a throw and then rolling one up and putting it on the corner, um, putting the pillows in such a way and then having bigger pillows on top, etc. There's There's a lot of things that you can do in your house that are not expensive 
to make it look attractive when you do host a party for people to be like, oh, I like what you did there type of thing. Um, what else? Oh, I do movie night, movie night at my house. Uh, and of course, my favorite, which is board game night. Bringing people over to your house to play board games. You have a cop captive audience. Again, you're, half the battle is over. You're getting them to your house. And then you have the threesome. So yeah, hosting events, I love. So that's number four. I'm going four, three, two, one. Number four is to meet people and meet people everywhere, whether it's online, uh, like on Facebook groups, or uh, going out and meeting people at cafes, bars, etc. hosting events at your house. And finally, you can meet people through dating services or apps. Uh, or dating sites, I should say. S dating sites and apps. The predominant ones here are ColumbianCupid.com, which is a website, and they do have an app, but it's mostly used on your laptop or PC. It's a website, and it is paid. You have to pay to be able to talk to women, and it, I think it's like 40 bucks a month or 30 bucks a month, so it's kind of expensive. And I've used it over the years, and I've had a good experience with it, uh, but I don't use it anymore. I don't need to use C Columbian Cupid. Um, Tinder, I use Tinder. I like Tinder. Although, again, it's free. You're not going to get many matches or looks, especially if you're not like a really good looking guy that gets a bunch of likes all the time. You, uh, so the algorithm, I've learned, pushes the attractive people in the front so that people will pay. So if you're not an attractive person, you're not going to get a lot of views. You have to pay for the view. So you have to boost, and that costs like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. I don't remember what it is, but you boost, and then you start getting matches or people interested, right? Um, I thought I was just like super ugly, but then I boosted a couple, and I was like, oh, shit. Okay, it's not that I'm super ugly. It's their algorithm that thinks I'm ugly. <laughs> so they're not pushing me on the top, which I totally get. It's business. Um, it's not personal. Uh, so, yeah, using Tinder... One of the things, sorry, I'm itchy here. Uh, I'm going to turn this uh, air conditioning on. So one of the big things that you need to know about using dating apps is to be able to decipher between who's a hood rat and who's like a regular girl and who's a prostitute. So there's three different types of women that you'll see on Tinder or Columbian Cupid is the regular girl that is smart, works, and... Um, is not a prostitute or a slut. And then there are the other two, what they call here grillas or sluts or hood rats. And then you have the, um, the, the prostitutes that are blatant about it and say, hey, I'm here to, to be paid. And they'll tell you that. But I've been here so long that as I'm scrolling through Tinder, I'll see a beautiful girl. I'm like, oh, she's beautiful. Oh, but she's a hood rat. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, yeah, but she's a prostitute. I can tell. Not only in their way that they're dressed, the background in their images, but also in their descriptions, like what they say. If there's like a little marijuana leaf with a happy face with a dollar sign sticking out of it, then you know what that means. She's into drugs and money. That's the, No matter how beautiful she is and you match, that's probably not a woman that you want to pursue, unless if you don't mind paying or being the sugar daddy or whatever. But that's not what I look for, so that's not what I scroll you know, right on. But that is a word of advice, is to learn to decipher between the three, right? The, the regular girl that you may want to pursue for a long-term relationship or, or, or a good connection, I should say, because I don't do long-term uh, re relationships. I don't do long-term relationships. I like long-term connections or deep connections, even if it's for a short amount of time. With the, with the girls that you want to connect with on a friendship level, relationship level, and then there are the other two, which are what they call here grillas, or a rough translation would be sluts or hood rats, and then the prostitutes, because there are many. And pro again, remember, prostitution is legal here. Um, so that's one thing. And if you want to take my course, I charge $1,000. Just hit me up. Number three. Number three on my list of dating tips in Colombia and in the world, I guess, you could take this anywhere, is number three is you're on vacation attitude. You're on vacation attitude. 
a lot of times we get into our own heads before we meet someone or go after someone. I'm naturally introverted. To answer your question, uh, ETWTF, that, that, just put your fucking name. <laughs> you have such a long, I'll just call you ET, extraterrestrial. ET, to answer your question, I am naturally introverted. What you're seeing right now is me pushing myself out of my comfort zone for personal development reasons and for passion. I'm naturally introverted and shy and insecure. That's how I was. I guess that's not nature. That is the way I've been nurtured. Because of my experience in my body, in my own skin, I've, I grew up and have grown up to be naturally introverted, shy, and insecure about myself. So I, can't, I constantly have to check myself, challenge myself, and make corrections. A brain hack that I would like to share with you that I use when I feel this way, insecure, shy, introverted, is this. When I see a beautiful woman or a group of beautiful women or I'm with a group and there's a beautiful woman there or whatever the case is, I think as if I were on vacation. I say, okay, naturally I'm like, oh shit, paralyzed with fear, introver introverted, shy, and then I think to myself, what would I do right now if I were on vacation? If I didn't know any of these people and tomorrow they'd all be gone back to their homes, I would go back home and no one would know each other ever again or see each other ever again afterwards. What would I do if I were on vacation right now? I'd ask her to dance. I'd dance by, by myself alone. Like if nobody were watching, I'd buy some people drinks. I'd unbutton my shirt, I'd crack a joke, I'd be bold and reckless. What would I do if I was on vacation? So that's a brain hack that I've used when I feel introverted, shy, and not motivated to like approach people's like, okay, what would, what would vacation Andrew do? What would I do if these people, I didn't know these people and it wouldn't matter tomorrow because they're all gonna be gone and I'll never see them again. And then I, I take action. It, it, the action has to be within five seconds, I've also learned. You should also read The Five Second Rule. I forget her name, the, the, uh, it's a really good book. The Five Second Rule is to act on your emotion immediately and within five seconds, otherwise everything goes downhill, I've noticed. If I don't act on it, everything goes downhill and I end up going home, and this has happened, I end up going home bored, alone, and kicking myself, and then lying in bed watching fucking YouTube videos. It has happened. Um, yeah, so think of what you would do if you were on vacation. So when I'm in a large group, I'm like, what would vacation Andrew do? What would Carnaval de Barranquilla Andrew do right now? Boom, that's what I'm doing, and, I'm, and, I, and I take action. How important is that in Medellin? It's as important as it is anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, people like to surround themselves and be around positive, energetic people. Especially if you're in that setting. If you're at a disco, if you're at a bar, if you're at a party, a cocktail party, a house party, or whatever, people like to be around positive people, the people that make them feel good. So work on yourself to make other people feel good. And that could be in various ways. It doesn't mean you have to buy everyone everything. Uh, obviously, if you have money and you want to be friendly and you want to buy someone a drink, do it. But uh, here, drinks are cheap relatively. If you go to some of the high-end bars, they can be expensive. But even buying a bottle is less than 50 bucks sometimes here. Uh, and that makes everyone happy. And, and it's a good icebreaker. So, that, uh, so it's not like you need money to do this. You could do it by changing your attitude. And that begins inside first. Yeah, spontaneity, uh, Johnny. Johnny says, uh, being spontaneous is good. Yeah, being spontaneous is like, there's a Seinfeld ep episode where George decides to do everything that his brain tells him to do. He does the opposite. 
So sometimes that's the, the whole vacation attitude. I'm on vacation attitude. What would regular Andrew do? Fuck regular Andrew. I'm going to do the a complete opposite. And usually it gets either a laugh or I get interest or I at least dance with someone. And even if there was no chemistry or interest, that's the beautiful thing about Colombia is that there's a lot of physical touch, especially in Medellin. When reggaeton comes on, you can be grinding up on a booty. If salsa comes on, you're already touching the girl and everything. You haven't even talked to her once. But you can ask a stranger to dance. And usually if someone's going to a club, it's to dance. It's not like in the United States where you have to tell a woman's like, wait, you come to a bar, a singles bar to drink, yet you don't want to talk. Or you come to a dance club to dance, yet you don't want to dance. That's fucked up. Here, people go with the intention of having fun and dancing and meeting people. Uh, and even if they're not going to meet someone, they know that dancing salsa requires a partner or bachata or merengue. So you're in. You're in like Flynn, even for those few minutes. And if there's no chemistry or whatever, you just move on to the next girl because there's plenty. Um, so yeah, number three. What would you do on vacation? Number two dating tip is have money. If you spend more time working on your bank account now, later you'll have more time to work on your penis. Let me repeat that. If you spend more time working on your bank account now, later you'll have more people working on your penis. <laughs> That's like a t-shirt. No, that would be too long for a t-shirt. But what I mean is that this is an obvious one. Having more money has increased my dating life. And it's not because I buy shit for people or buy shit for girls. But it's, it's weird. Well, it's not weird, but this is my experience. Chasing women is fun. You know, the hunt, the chase, the, flirt, the flirtation, the back and forth, the cat and mouse, that's fun. However, having someone chase you is more fun, <laughs> and it's a good balance because not everybody, it's not like everybody um, having girl. I'm beating women off with a bat. No, I'm not. Um, I've hardly ever had a woman chase me in my life, but ever, ever since I started to make more money, somehow I got better looking, and I've gotten more women chasing me, message me to the point where I've had to block a few because I'm just like, okay, this is done. Um, so work on your bank account and not with the intention of women. That shouldn't be your dream. Like, oh, one day I'm going to have a plethora of women. If it is, if it works for you, great. But that wasn't my approach. My dreams are way bigger than women. Women is just a nice added touch to my life. So having money in Colombia means that if you're making dollars or pounds or euros or any other, uh, currency that goes a long way here, you're you pretty much pretty good, right? You can afford to live in a nice place or at least a decent place, furnish it nicely, or if it's already furnished, at least it'll look nice, not like your grandma's cottage or whatever. And people want, would want to go there, right? Or people would want to be with you. Um, dressing nice in Medellin especially is a plus and almost mandatory. If you're going to go out don't wear shorts and flip-flops because that screams tourists, just like when you go to Disneyland. I grew up near Disneyland in Anaheim, and it was so fun to go to Disneyland. I've been to Disneyland over 100 times as a kid because I had a cousin and an uncle that worked there, so we'd get in for free. Where it was so fun going because it was all tourists, and they all dressed the same with the fanny pack, the visor, the, the shorts, the flip-flops, or the big-ass tennis shoes. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Get a sense of style. I know you're traveling or you may be visiting, or maybe you have zero sense of style or a very low sense of style, which was my case. Like literally when I met Joelle, you know, 10 years ago, I wouldn't dress like a tourist, but I'd always wear a black t-shirt, jeans. And that's what I feel comfortable in. And that's what I wear a lot of the times here is, you know, black band t-shirts. You know, I like rock and roll and music. So I'll wear a band t-shirt, jeans, and my Chuck Taylors and that's what I like to wear. That's, that's what I feel comfortable in. But ever since I stepped up my style game, I get a lot more compliments. I get a lot more looks. I get a lot more conversation started. For example, this shirt I bought yesterday at Boyo Playa in Oviedo. And even when I bought it, 
one of the women that I went, I went to go to another store for a, uh, for sh- uh, for shorts, but not board shorts. They're like dress shorts for Barranquilla because it's super hot there. Everyone wears shorts. Um, she made a compliment about the shirt. She's like, "Oh, I love that shirt," and I'm and she was pretty attractive. So, uh, but not my type. She was very short, and I'm like six four or six three. It's very weird when uh, they call it uh, el llaverito, like she's your keychain. I don't like the whole keychain thing. I want someone a little bit taller. But anyway, she was cute, and I, and I said, "Really, you know, I'm gonna pick out shorts. Can you help me? I'm, I don't know much about this stuff, but." You seem to like clothes. And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. So she actually is like, oh, those shorts are great. And I already knew because now I, I, I have a sense of style. So I'm like, yeah, that's those are the shorts that I'm going to buy. And she's like, yeah, you should get those. Okay, great. So just things like that where money comes into the picture and it's not a ton of money, but you should have a good sense of style. If you don't have a sense of style, get with someone that does. For example, Joelle has an excellent sense of style. To the point where I'm like, oh, you're going to Boya Play? Buy something for me. And he knows what to get me. <laughs> and he'll get he'll get me a shirt or he'll get me uh, shorts or whatever uh, or or jeans or whatever. And he'll be like, yeah, it would cost this much. Or sometimes he doesn't even charge. He's like, here, just take them. He's an awesome person like that. But having someone like that in your life that can change you and, and you know, subtly, it's not even big changes, is great. Uh, another thing here in, in terms of, you know, having money and appearance is, you know, your haircut. I get my haircut every Friday. Uh, every week I get my haircut. Um, and it's relatively cheap compared to the United States. Here you can get your haircut for 20,000 pesos to, let's say, a higher end place for 50,000 or 60,000 pesos. You know, divide that by 4,000. That's what it is in dollars. So you're talking about maybe $5 for a haircut to maybe 20 let's say very, very high end, 30 or $40, that, that would be very expensive. But let's say it's about, let's say it's 20 on average. You could spend $20 on yourself uh, a month at least, or maybe every other week, uh, bi-weekly here in Colombia to make yourself, you know, better looking <laughs> or like you take care of yourself. They, they like that here. That is the Paisa culture. It's not just the women, but the men to do too. That's why you see a barber shop like on every corner in every neighborhood here. Um, so yeah, working on your bank account, working on your wallet will help your penis out. Trust me, it's helped mine. Um, it's not like I said before, I'm beating women off with a stick, but I'm not beating myself off either every night. <laughs> uh, so number two, have money. And the number one dating tip for Colombia is work on yourself. Work on yourself. And I say this out of my personal experience. This is the number one thing I've done to get me laid more than ever before. I'm not great looking, as you can see. I'm naturally introverted. I told you that. And shy. So I've got to work with what God gave me. A huge penis. But no one's going to see that huge penis if I don't work on myself, on my personality. So how did I start working on my person, uh, on my, on myself, on my character, on my insecurities, on my battles, on my demons? Number one, I read a lot and I listen a lot to podcasts, to audiobooks, and I read motivational books. That's literally all I read nowadays. I, I used to like to read novels every now and then, and I like John Grisham, Stephen King, Dean Koontz. I like murder mysteries. I like Anne Rice is one of my favorite authors of all time. I spent two years in, you know, a total of two years in prison, so I had a lot of time to read, and so I got into novels, but on the outs here, I read a lot of personal development books, and there's so many out there, and there's free stuff. They're all free. Like, a lot of this shit you can find for free, whether it's YouTube videos on what to do, but it's not only reading. It's actually doing what is said in the book. If the book says, try this, you do it that same day, and you start logging and one of the things that has been therapeutic for me is doing this stuff, you know, whether it's the Columbia podcast, doing these live videos. This is stepping out of my comfort zone. I am not naturally like this. So pushing myself to conquer my fears and putting myself in situations that scare the shit out of me makes me grow as a person. So personal development is huge. You could do that through reading, 
through watching videos, listening to stuff on Spotify. There's a lot of motivational stuff on there and taking action. Number so that's like primordial. You have to take action. You have to push yourself out of the comfort zone. So, you know, that's how I learned how to swim. My dad threw me in the fucking water and he's like, swim, bitch. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how you grow. That's how you uh, work on yourself. So that's number one, obviously, is working on yourself through personal development. Another thing that has helped me a lot is um, being active, like playing sports, working out. It doesn't mean that you have to go become a fucking bodybuilder or become a professional athlete or even an athlete. But being active is huge for various reasons. One, there's, it's proven science that when you do exercise, you feel good whether you're, it's during or after, you, you feel good and it releases dopamine in your brain and it's, that's the feel good uh, chemical in your brain. So getting active is huge and do it every single day. I'm giving you this advice because it's worked on me. So now it's your turn, if you're listening to this, to go out and do it. Today, what did you do today to be active? Did you walk Instead of, you know, driving to the grocery store, if it's walkable, did you walk there? People may look at you weird because in the United States, if you live in the suburbs, people walking on the side of, ro of the road with a, a grocery bag makes you look homeless, but fuck other people. You're working on yourself. What did you do today that, to make you active? Did you ride your bike? Did you um, go on a hike? Did you walk your dog? If your neighbor has a dog, did you ask him, hey, can I walk your dog? I'm trying to get more active. That's that's the hack, you know, be more active. It'll change your personality for that day. It'll make you happier. And that energy exudes and people are attracted to that. So uh, being active for me is one of the things that has helped me a lot in my life. Personal development, work on your self-esteem, work on your self-worth, build on what you're good at. This is how you work on your self-esteem and, uh, and your self-worth. This is what I've learned um, through, I, I do have a therapist and I've had a therapist and I highly recommend everyone having a therapist because everyone needs that professional in their life that they could tell everything to and they can't go gossip <laughs> and they can't tell anybody and they're not going to judge you and you grow and having a therapist is great. So this is what I've learned through working on myself to raise my self-esteem and my self-worth. Number one is... Um, Build on what you're good at already, right? F for example, I'm introverted, shy, self-conscious, but what is it that I'm good at? And there are, and what, and I was like, man, I'm not getting good at shit. And then I started writing the list, right? This was years ago when I started, you know, therapy with this therapist, writing the list, and I'm like, oh, and and then the list became super long, and I'm actually good at a lot of things when I thought that I wasn't. Um, and the conversation started like this. She said, well, write down what you're good at. I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm good at. And she's like, well, what do you do for a living? I'm like digital marketing. Are you good at it? Yes. Okay. Digital marketing. <laughs> Literally, there's that. It, it, sometimes you need that push or that kick in the, in the butt in order to get going on yourself because my, the way that I am, my personality is that I'm very hard on myself. I'm very hard and critical of myself. And that could be a toxic trait. Well, it is a toxic trait at times. Because when you start the negative self-talk, it snowballs and then it bleeds into your actions and your behaviors. So realizing that and analyzing that and nipping it at the bud is a huge boost to your self-esteem and your self-worth. How else do you work on your self-esteem and self-worth? Is by hanging out with positive people, cutting ties with toxic people even if they are your family members, even if they were your best friends from growing up, you have to get rid of them or limit your time with them if they are toxic. And how do you know someone is toxic or gaslighting you or whatever those terms are nowadays in, in behavioral health? Is how do you feel? How do you feel with them? Do you look forward to hanging out with them? Are you only hanging out with these people because you're being dependent, because you're being needy, because you are being clingy or because you have such self low self-worth or self-esteem that you feel that you need to be with this person, whether it's a friend or a current relationship, how do you feel? 
if you don't feel great around them, and obviously you're not going to feel great around everyone 100% of the time, but if your feelings of happiness are less than your negative feelings when you're around that person, then maybe that person is being toxic in your life and you're going to have to cut ties and you're going to have to use some of the other tactics that I told you in tip number four, which is joining groups around your interests and hanging out with those people and weeding out the people that are toxic in those groups and hanging out with the people that are positive. Um, Another way to increase self-esteem and self-worth for me has been to learn to be assertive, learn to say no. Stop being a yes person all of the time and being nice. Sometimes you have to say no and sometimes you have to be assertive. So learning to be assertive is, is a big one and acting it. So the only way that you learn to be assertive is by actually practicing it. So practice saying no. When the bum on the street comes for money, practice saying no. Obviously, that's a joke, but in, in, in a sense, that's a, a, a kind of a good example because a lot of the time we're forced and guilted into saying yes in different situations. But when you learn to be assertive and saying no or standing your ground on certain things, your self-esteem gets better because at the end of the day, when you're laying in bed, you're like, oh, that, that situation, I really asserted myself and I feel good. I could sleep well tonight knowing that I did that. Uh, another thing that I've done is to be hard on yourself. Yes, that's, that's good, but it can lead into toxicity. But also be kind to yourself. That was a therapeutic thing that I've done in my life is to learn to love myself and be kind to myself. I started by one of my mentors years ago told me to look at myself in the mirror and tell myself I love myself every single day. I still do that to this day. Sometimes I'll forget. This morning I forgot. So, Andrew, I love you, and today's going to be a great day. I, th th that's the phrase that I say every morning when I'm brushing my teeth. I ran out this morning because I had to go um, do stuff, and then the cleaning lady was here, so I didn't do it. That's an excuse, but I will do it today. But if you get into that habit, you start believing it, <laughs> which is great. And then once you believe something, it becomes that, right? You become what you believe. So le learning to love yourself and practicing it, I'm telling you this now, and if you're listening to this and you don't practice this, then I, you have no excuse. Um, okay, uh, and the last thing on personal development that I'll mention is to become an interesting person. Become an interesting person by d learning new things, trying new things. You don't have to be an expert at everything, but learning and doing new things makes you more interesting. I know because I've done it. When you don't do anything or try something new, people don't want to know about that. People want to know about, hey, you know, I hiked that mountain, you know, the other day. Really? Tell me about that. When can I go? Or how was it? You know, I, I'm genuinely, I don't like hiking. I don't do fucking hiking. I rarely like, I, I'm, I'm a tech guy. I'd rather be in my air-conditioned room on a big screen playing video games. But I push myself out of the comfort zone, and I will go camping. I will go hiking because I know I don't like it, so I need to do it. I need to step out of my comfort zone. And then when I'm in a group or I'm meeting someone new, I'm able to say, yeah, you see that mountain over there? I hiked it. I'm like, oh, when can I go? Well, I don't really want to go. Well, you're hot, so yeah, let's go. Type of thing, right? Um, always be learning. Always be doing. Um, and Oh, and lastly is being an interesting person requires some level of comedy. <laughs> people like funny people, right? Uh, and when I mean people as beautiful women, usually like to laugh just like anyone else. So if you learn to be funny, because it's not something that you're born with, I don't think. It's something that you learn. I'm, I, 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 again, I'm naturally introverted, but I am observant. I'm very observant. And I learned the Paisa jokes and their slang and their... Um, uh, uh, mannerisms and all this stuff so that when the chance arises, I can make a witty remark that will make someone laugh and that will be memorable to them. And then I can text it back to them when I got their phone number and say, hey, remember this and blah, blah, blah. So being witty, being positive, being funny is a, a good quality to have. And you can learn it. You can learn it. Like I said, there are a ton of YouTube channels. There's a ton of information on the internet about 
paisa slang, paisa jokes. Uh, you could look up the uh, most famous Medellin uh, or even Colombian comedians and start watching their videos, even if you don't understand with the subtitles as you're learning Spanish. If you know Spanish, you've got a leg up and you really don't have an excuse. But knowing that is not only you assimilating, well, not assimilating, but learning about the culture so that when the situations arise, you can laugh together with the group or you can make someone else laugh. Practice the delivery of the jokes. I do that. I practice what I'm going to say here before I say it. And I practice in front of a mirror with a joke or an expression or something that I'm going to do if I meet a woman or something. I know that's kind of weird, but it's worked for me. Um, and finally, how do you be an in how to be an interesting person is ask questions. Most people think that in order to be an interesting person, you're going to be answering all the questions because people want to know about you. But the best conversations that you'll ever have, and you can look this up on the internet, is when someone listens and asks questions. So when you learn to be inquisitive or you force yourself to be inquisitive instead of talking about yourself the whole time and you start asking questions to them about themselves and have lists of questions, you know, like uh, that go beyond the what do you do? What's your sign? Well, actually, what's your sign is a pretty good one because most girls know what their sign is, you know, or most people know what their sign is. But if you learn a little bit about each sign, you could be like, oh, you're, you're a Capricorn, so that means you're pretty hardworking. And usually, everyone's hardworking. So you could say the same thing, oh, you're, you're a Cancer, that, so you're pretty hardworking and, and smart, you know, uh, or you like to laugh. It's like, oh, really, you know? How did you know? Oh, oh you know, I'm, I'm clairvoyant. Whatever, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a funny thing. For example, I've learned um, to ask usually about, you know, star signs, I've learned how to read your hand, like what each line in the hand supposedly. I don't, you don't have to believe in all this shit. I just find it interesting. And uh, half of my family on my father's side are clairvoyants and herbal healers. And my dad reads your, can read your coffee or your hot chocolate. Once you're done, he'll read it and tell you. And he's clairvoyant in that r r remark or in that way. So I've taken that and kind of ran with it. I learned how to read the tarot cards. Uh, I'm not perfect at it yet. And I'm not great at it either. I just, last year I took time and started learning it. I ha I don't do it. That, that's not like a parlor thing that I do. Um, but if you have something like that, that's interesting, that will make you ask people questions because that's what it is. When you're reading someone's hand or cards, you're asking more questions than you're actually giving information. So learn to ask questions. That makes you more interesting. So let me go over those um, one more time. The top tips for dating in Colombia or anywhere in the world is number four, meet people everywhere. Number three, establish a you're on vacation attitude. Number two, have money. And number one, work on yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't liked or subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications. If you like this content and like this video, please give a like, make a comment. I'm trying to grow this channel for a purpose to reach more people and to make money so that I can work on my penis later. And I really enjoy doing this and pushing myself out of my comfort zone as part of my personal development, as part of my my mo in life now and i really like doing it um so i hope you guys tune in tomorrow i'm doing a live episode every single day i will be live again at 7 p.m colombian time with the colombia podcast and it's going to be the dating episode that's why i did this episode as dating because at 7 p.m we're going to have the big podcast about two hours of six or seven different interviews of people, including a couple people that have been on Tinder dates and they were drugged and robbed with scopolamine and a couple girls, uh, one Venezuelan one who's very pretty and cute and smart and she speaks English. So I'm very much looking forward to this. So tune in at seven o'clock. Thank you guys, have a great day. Before I go, actually, let me go to some of the comments. Um.
yeah so johnny johnny says great content good shit <laughs> thanks johnny hope you're having a great day over there in the united states of america uh et says that's a good hack rocio macia gives me a kiss that's my mom so i do have women watching this channel damn so it's working um uh, yeah, so how important is it to be extroverted in Medellin? I think I answered that. It's as important as it is anywhere in the world um, and in any situation. You don't have to be the most extroverted person in the world, but you have to have some sort of, uh, some level of confidence and some level of motivation to make someone laugh, to meet somebody, to be active. There should be some level. Of, I mean, you are human and you want to meet other humans, and usually that's what it takes. So you have to have some level of extroversion, if that's the word. So yeah. Um, oh, my friends out here, David, David, you're coming to to Colombia, and May. You'll be here in the next month. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna have to watch some basketball, watch the uh, NCAA finals. We got uh, NBA. What else is going on right now in the sports world? Baseball is starting. I've, I'm a baseball nerd as well. Susan gives me kisses. You're going to get blocked, Susan. <laughs> um, Fernando says, good work. Buen trabajo. Gracias, Fernando. Jeff Rubin, good topic. Looking forward to being on the show. Yes, Jeff, you need to be on the show. Uh, we should have you on either the next one or the whenever you're in i guess you've been in town this whole time but yeah we should get in touch about that that would be great um or you could i could even do like a skype session where we skype here um live and then i i edit it and and then it goes up on my channel as well and then also maybe on the colombian podcast as well so again thank you guys for joining my name is 